Welcome back to the Red Ridge Report. Adam Zuvinich joins me now. And Adam, week number two, the pistol offense in the Nevada Wolfpack. Pretty good football team. What can we expect from Nevada? I think they are a good football team. This is probably going to be the Red Raiders' toughest non-conference game of the season. Uh, the fact that it's on the road in Reno, Nevada is going to make it a little even more tricky. Uh, the one thing about Nevada, if you look at what they did against Grambling State last week, 49-13 win, pretty convincing. Uh, they, they really used a whole lot of different weapons against, against Grambling State. Yes, they did. They used four different quarterbacks. How often do you see that? Uh, you know, and it had ten different guys rush the ball. Uh, they ran for 426 yards. Uh, gained 629 total. They just ran all over Grambling State. Uh, you know, I think you really have to watch out for the quarterback, Colin Kaepernick. Uh, they've got seem to have a little two-headed monster going at running back now. Yes, they do. With uh, Luke Lippincott and now Vi Toa, who uh, is a sophomore coming up. So uh, it, it ought to be interesting, uh, at least to see if uh, if the Red Raiders can slow down the Nevada offense, just like the Nevada will try to slow down Texas Tech. Yeah, and you know, we, you and I were talking earlier about the pistol, you know, what is the pistol? And it's essentially, you know, at the simplest term, even though it sounds kind of, uh, you know, simplified and dumb, they, they take what you give them. And, you know, this is a six foot six quarterback, and if he sees an opening and sees a seam off a read option, he's going to take off and go. I mean, you're talking about last week, he had touchdown runs of 7, 19, and 28 yards. And, you know, that's a pretty big target coming over toward your linebackers and safeties. Yes, it is, especially when you think uh, Kaepernick, he only had six carries. Right. Three of them went for touchdowns. He got 69 yards. So, you know, they have, they have that big play capability. I think two of uh, – Busted off a run of 62 yards early in the game. Leo uh, Lippincott had a long run. It, it, what's interesting, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out against Texas Tech. But if, if, you look at, if you look at what Nevada did against Grambling State, you had Kaepernick and Lippincott in the first quarter. They had their backup quarterback, Nick Graziano, who was a starter last year for the first five games before getting injured. Him, him and Tua played the second quarter. Right. And then they kind of mixed and matched the rest of the way. So I think they, that might be a little gamesmanship. Maybe they don't want to show Texas Tech too much on the game film. Right. But I, I think, I suspect that when they come out, we're looking at Lippincott at running back, Kaepernick at quarterback. If those guys struggle, though, they've got some capable backups to bring in. Well, and the thing about it is, you know, Texas Tech in the game against Eastern Washington, they do a good job against the run. The line does well, the linebackers do well. And you know, Nevada's going to have to become less one-dimensional in this in this football game. You know, only 203 yards roughly passing in that game. They're going to have to do a little bit more because if Texas Tech gets set back on their heels and is anticipating the run, they might have a little bit of trouble generating that much offensive productivity like they had against Grambling State. That, that's right, Zach, especially when you look at what Texas Tech did against the run last week. Uh, Eastern Washington had all their success in the passing game. So, you know, th that's a good thing that Texas Tech, maybe they'll, they'll be better equipped to stop the run this year, which says, okay, that's going to be great going into this game. You know, Nevada last week, seven rushing touchdowns, yes. zero through the air. Uh, so I, I think you definitely have to be concerned with that. But I think the way the offenses match up against each other, I, I think you have to give the advantage to Texas Tech there. If, that you do, definitely. If Nevada's going to continue to try to run the ball, I think Texas Tech will be able to right. keep them in check for the most part. And meanwhile, if you look at, uh, we may be jumping ahead too far here, but if you look at Nevada's defense yes. and what they did, uh, they were also very good against the run. They only gave up five yards on 40 right. carries. And they only gave up one touchdown. The, the you know, grambling states of the score came on interception return. And this is a defense that had to replace eight starters. So they've done a pretty good job, even though you know, we know Nevada's a 1AA team, or not Nevada, we know grambling states a 1AA team. Nevada, that was their first, you know, first game of the year. But still, eight starters being replaced that's pretty good first week's performance against a team that traditionally has a pretty good offense. It really is. I, I think, and, and looking at some of the comments from the Nevada head coach, Chris All after the game, uh, he wasn't too happy with the way his secondary played. Right. They ended the year. None of the quarterbacks in their pro, none of the cornerbacks in their program have, have ever played at a four-year school, have any experience on the playing field. So that's really where their weakness is. Uh, they've got some promising guys, uh, some really good players, more on the interior. Uh, a defensive end, a sophomore, Dante Moak, uh, had a really good, really good game uh, in his starting debut. Led the team with eight tackles, three behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, he had two of their six sacks. And yes. I, I saw a comment from, from Moak uh, after the game. It says, I love being in the backfield. It's like my second home. There uh, you go. So, you know, this is a guy who's going to try to do as much as he can to get behind the offensive line, put pr pressure on Graham Harrell. Stuff the running backs when he gets a chance. Uh, and they also have a senior linebacker, uh, Joshua Maga, 
who had a pretty good game as well. Two and a half tackles behind the line. Right. He had he was credited with one and a half sacks. You know, and another thing about that is, is you know, they're going to have to get pressure on Graham Harrell because if you've seen anything with Texas Tech, if you do not pressure them, they will hurt you. And with a young secondary like you just talked about, Nevada will get into trouble early if they do not get Graham Harrell out of his comfort zone and make him move around a little bit. I think that's right. And I think you really, even against Eastern Washington, you know, uh, we've, we've talked a lot about Texas Tech's you know, big offensive line, but uh, Eastern Washington was able to put some pressure on there. You know, there was one series in particular. Uh, Harold got hit three times on three consecutive plays. Yes, he did. Uh, I think he might have completed one of those passes. You know, every time he was getting up and he kind of getting up gingerly and, and looking a little rattled and, and had to talk to the official to, you know, to, to kind of put a bug in his ear. But they, but they got back there. They were trying to be physical with him, and I, and I think you'll see a lot of teams do that this year. They're going to come after Harrell a little bit more than what we've maybe seen in the past. I, I would think so. I would think that's really the, the best strategy is to slow down Texas Tech is to put pressure on Graham Harrell, uh, make him feel uncomfortable back right. there, make him work for everything he gets. If, if he can stand there and, and have you know three to five seconds, You're no pressure whatsoever, You're and, he, in a lot of and, trouble. He, and he can look through all his reads and make a throw, Texas Tech, no, no one can slow down Texas Tech. Too many offensive weapons. And on an interesting side note, you know, if you like to compare stuff, next week Nevada's going to go to Columbia and play the Missouri Tigers. So we're going to get to see a little bit of comparison there. But, you know, we should expect a pretty tight ball game out at Nevada. But in the end, Texas Tech got a little bit of a wake-up call against Eastern Washington. This game's probably going to go Texas Tech's favor if you really look at it on paper. I think so. And, and I, I really do think, uh, as you just mentioned, I, I think the fact that the Texas Tech wasn't happy with its performance against Eastern Washington, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, the, the coaches are, are going to be uh, – <laughs> are going to be on them, so to speak, this week during practice. Uh, they're going to make sure that they come out with a better effort on Saturday, which I think will really, in the end, which I think will pay off for Texas Tech. If, uh, if they'd have ran all over Eastern Washington, we might be looking at an upset here, especially because they're playing in Reno. Outstanding. Well, all right, guys, Saturday night, going to be a late start for us, a late night for us. That's an 8.05 kickoff our time out there in Reno, Nevada. Texas Tech takes on the Nevada Wolf Pack, and we're going to be right back. We're going to talk about last week's Big 12 games and this week's upcoming, upcoming Big 12 schedule.